weight in the EV Expo 2013. Yeah, okay. A lot of people are staring at me because I have no idea what to do. And plus, I'm making it. Play the game. Yeah, I don't get it. What? I don't know. I'm confused. I have no idea what's going on. I think it's safe to say that I've been a PlayStation fan for a long time. And although I've enjoyed the occasional Nintendo and PC game, PlayStation has always been my go-to system. I had the original Xbox and 360 back in the day, but for some reason I never got Halo. And I've only played it a few times over a friend's house some 10 years ago. Clearly, I hadn't experienced the true power of X. But since the recent Halo Infinite gameplay reveal, although it's generally agreed upon by everyone that the graphics and pop-ins aren't up to next-gen standards, I also didn't really think the gameplay was all that special either. The only problem was that the gameplay was the one thing that almost all Halo fans loved from the reveal. Many were saying the gameplay looks crisp, amazing, and like the old Halo. But I couldn't really see why it was so appealing to everyone. In my opinion, it looked very bland and uninspiring. Then I thought to myself, I can't judge the gameplay since I've never fully tried a Halo game for myself. I never given this long running beloved series a fair go. So that's exactly what I did. I took to Reddit, Twitter and asked a few friends of mine on which game I should play first regarding the story and what had the best multiplayer. From a lot of different answers, I decided to buy and play both Halo Reach and Halo 3's multiplayer and story. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but from what I understand, most of the Halo fanbase regards Halo 3 to be the best original classic style Halo multiplayer experience, and Reach as the best pseudo-modern Halo multiplayer experience. Reach though is a bit controversial because it was the first time they added abilities such as sprinting, jetpacks, and so on. Also, I'm playing on the PC version of the Master Chief Collection, and I'll be giving my personal thoughts on the personality of the series, the gameplay, and the story. Altogether, in the months of August and September, I ended up playing 56 hours across both games. I put 30 hours in the multiplayer, and it took me 8 hours in total to complete both story modes. The other 18 hours were spent in searching for lobbies and loading screens. It actually takes a while to find games, especially on some of the unpopular game modes, while also being on a less popular server. The graphics were set to low for better performance, so the game would usually look better than the recorded footage. And also, yeah, I suck at the game. This was my first proper time playing Halo, so some of the footage should be amusing for veteran players to watch. Also, this is just my personal experience of the series. If you can't handle me saying good or bad things about these games, then feel free to stop watching. Let's go. Like, I actually get hurt from Halo. <laughs> Halo has a lot of personality. Playing these games took me back to the early 2000s, and in a good way. For better or worse, this game screams Halo, and it doesn't care about what you think. It's going to do whatever it wants. From the cheering kid sound files that play when you kill someone with a specific armor, <laughs> to the badass voiceover that gives you a more defined jawline just by hearing him speak for 50 hours. Lost the lead. Tie the leader. Lost the lead. Lost the lead. Kill Joy. Skull taken. Skullamanjaro. Swat. And how can I not mention the almost spiritual main menu music that completely contrasts the general arcadey feeling of the game? Oh, it's breaking up for me. It all gives you a very different vibe very quickly. And although a bit strange, I can appreciate that. It gives this game a distinct feeling that's completely different to anything I've played on PlayStation. This game is everything the power of X represents, and it wants you to know that. That's how the game feels. But how does it play? <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, I might record that one. For the first time in ages, I was having a completely new experience to a very beloved long-running franchise. I think you veteran players are going to enjoy this, but 
when I started, I was making such rookie mistakes, like accidentally killing my friends. Fighting with each other? <laughs> oh crap, sorry. <laughs> Getting in the wrong side of vehicles, or just generally pressing the wrong buttons. Though that's partly because I had to get used to the key bindings. That did not work. I pressed the wrong button. Also, when I saw the loadout screen on Reach, I asked my friend how to select my primary and secondary weapon loadout. I know, a complete new mistake. I had no idea what I was doing. And for the first 5 hours I could barely kill anyone, let alone compete with the 13 year veterans until I eventually figured out what I was missing. Thing ain't yet, I don't understand. There's no power greater than X. The most powerful console ever made. Exclusive. Exclusive. World premiere. Breathe. <laughs> After I got all that sorted out, and the power of X completely consumed me, I started to feel like I can actually experience the game, and not just die all the time. So if you've never played Halo, the core gameplay is very much the classic arcade style of shooters, especially Halo 3. For both 3 and Reach, you can't pick your weapon loadout, instead you'll have to find unique weapons that spawn around the map. Now, I do prefer the more modern styles of FPS, but that doesn't mean I can't have fun in the classic styles of shooters as well. And before I critique both of these games, I am keeping in mind that Halo 3 came out in 2007 and Reach in 2010. But this is my experience of what the fanbase generally considers to be one of the best two multiplayer experiences in the franchise. So I will be giving it my honest thoughts. But feel free to disagree. My opinions are subjectively based on my experience of the game. Alright, so let's start with what I think Halo does really well in. Halo really shines with the amount of different game modes it has. There's so much to choose from and they can be drastically different from one another. I didn't get time to play all of them and sometimes I just couldn't find a game at all because the server I was on uh, wasn't really that populated. Uh, for example, I never got to play a game of infection sadly. But my personal favourite game mode that I could try was Fiesta because it just randomly gives you any of the weapons uh, instead of having you find them around which can make for some crazy mayhem <laughs> To be honest, I like the more different and out there game modes than the standard game modes of 4v4 and 8v8 Also, these games have an extensive map creation I gotta hand it to Bungie, especially for Halo 3 Having the create a map system and all these game modes would have been a big package back in the day. There are also enough official multiplayer maps for there to be a good rotation where you don't play the same map too often. And some of the map designs and aesthetics can be really nice, especially in Reach. Also, there's a lot of character customization options to unlock, and I love how nearly every vehicle is a co-op vehicle. It really brings me back to the old days where split screen and playing with friends were a staple of games. The vehicle themselves are also fine, they do the job and there's more than enough of a variety. Also some of the weapons are really unique and fun to use. My personal favourite is this green rocket and the energy sword. And some weapon designs can be really nice as well. The difference between human and alien weapons and vehicles are also well contrasted. Alright, so that's what I enjoyed about both Reach and 3. Now to what I didn't enjoy. The core gameplay of Halo definitely has a solid foundation, and for its time, it's probably one of the best in the classic FPS genre. But there's a few things I just don't like about the core gameplay. First of all, the time it takes to kill someone is stupidly long that it eventually becomes a chore to engage enemies. And from my personal experience, Health bars are too inconsistent. Maybe I just don't understand the game's mechanics or damage outputs, but I become less confident that my actions actually do something. For example, one hit kill guns don't kill someone in one hit, or you can throw three grenades at some guy in a corner, 
and he still will find it in his power to survive and counter your schemes with his melee. To be honest, anything to do with grenades are really inconsistent. But to be honest, I think the worst thing about the core gameplay is that the overarching answer to all your problems, both in Halo 3 and in Reach, is to just melee. Which makes the 30 seconds spent shooting at a guy feel all the more worse when his melee just instantly kills you. Like, I know a melee to the back is definitely a one hit kill, but sometimes I or an enemy dies from one hit to the front. And from what I can understand from online is that weapons affect melee damage, I think. And depending on if you're jumping, walking, or standing, uh, it still also varies in damage. Or maybe that's just in Halo 2? Uh, I, I don't know. But anyway, the point is that the melee is way too strong and it makes so many weapons feel so worthless at close range. Dude, someone just stole that flag. Oh, he, how did he instant melee me? Oh, he instant melee. What? <laughs> <laughs> he instant melee me! <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's probably more worth like time, like you gotta get time back. Also, the vehicles are good for their time, except for this one thing I have to talk about. The Warthog. This thing represents everything good and bad about a vehicle. I love how you can get two friends to ride with you into battle, but man, this thing's health is insane. It can survive too much explosives and regular fire, while it does this stupid spinning maneuver like it's been driving on ice. Oh, he's still alive. Dude, that freaking warthog, but how is it so freaking flying? <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> oh, no, that goes again. And the turret on its back is way too strong, especially in 3 because they didn't add an overheat bar, so you can just keep shooting forever. The guy on the turret also gets extra health, or the turret just protects him from incoming damage. I'm not sure what one it is, but. Uh, he'll usually survive most situations, the driver won't. If this video, if this video gets millions, right? Oh yeah. It blows up and I start making money from it. If it does, it does. I will give you half of the money this video makes from you. Because he's <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I think I need money to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> There's a lot more I can say about the Warthog, but I think you guys get the point. Anyway, the overall clunkiness and mayhem of the game just doesn't work for me. Hopefully I can explain what I mean. This sort of ties back to the amount of health everyone has in the base game modes, and the inconsistencies of health, but also things like netcode or server connections making the delays of kills extremely obvious and too frequent. There are even times where I kill someone and I die by the same person who I just killed a second after he's already dead, and vice versa. Oh, I killed him! <laughs> and there are some noticeable issues with hit detection, especially with the energy sword and melees. <laughs> On that note, actually, there are so many bugs in this game. Now, from what I read online, some of these are only found in the Master Chief Collection and not in the original 360 releases, but from the amount there is, I can't tell which is from where. Like, sometimes my vehicle just decides to commit suicide, my melee ends up killing me, 
Zeus. Uh, I think. I get kicked out of lobby search for connectivity, even though I know for certain my connection is fine. Sometimes I get banned for no reason. <laughs> whoa, 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 freaking what? Wait, did it stop searching? It said it said you've been banned. What? Yeah, I took a screenshot of it. And other times, the game just refuses to search. And I'm not sure if it's just the server I was playing on, but this game has a noticeable problem with levers. It happens often enough for it to be worth mentioning. I've played a lot of online shooters, even some competitive ones, but still was quite shocked at the amount of levers there were for just casual quick play matches. Though this isn't the game's problem, so there's nothing you can really do there. Finally, even though I sort of like the voiceover guy's lines, God, he does not shut up. He brainwashes you with all and every Halo multiplayer line there is. You know you've played too much Halo for the night when you start doing stuff like this. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. Just gonna drink water. Yeah, all good. Alright, so just a quick break from the video. Uh, Series X just came out today, and I thought I'd just get you guys uh, a Game Pass Ultimate one month uh, subscription, or one of you guys at least. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And remember, it's um, Australia and New Zealand only. So sorry, US and everyone else. Uh, just keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, let pass, me know what happens. Pass, and I'll you see know, you guys. one thing we haven't really talked about is the fact that uh, we talked about Game Pass a little bit earlier. But you know, <laughs> all right, <laughs> this part's getting long enough. So in part two, I'll be reviewing what I thought of both game story modes and overall closing opinions on the experience as a whole. But until then, this has been the Hero of Sinner. Thanks for watching. Hill contested. Hill contested. Hill controlled.